Howdy folks. Today we're going to take a walk together and I'm going to show you some of my favorite early season trailside edibles. These plants are easy to find. They don't require any cooking. You can just spot them, pick them, pop them in your mouth and keep on heading down the trail. It's June 9th. We are along the western border of Wyoming and our elevation is about 6,300 feet above sea level. We're not even 40 yards from the truck and we've already found a delicious snack. This is Spring Beauty. It's a five petaled white flower. Sometimes it can be pinkish. Give you a look at it there. Leaves are long and lance shaped and everything up here is delicious. This is normally just what I eat. I just eat the leaves, the flowers and the rootstock. Mm. But if you want to dig down, there is a little um, corm, like a little uh, circular root at the bottom of it. And uh, that's pretty sweet too. But you got to go down really, really deep, and you got to be really fragile because the rootstock is not anchored to corn very well. So there it is. It's uh, little on the little ones, big on the big ones. Mm. Delicious. So our trail came into an opening. And in that opening, there was a bunch of yellow bells growing. Yellow bells are these guys right here. It produces a single yellow flower on a stalk that kind of bends over and turns upside down. All the leaves come out of the base and they're long and kind of grass-like. Now the best part of the yellow bell is down beneath. So you gotta dig down gently next to the plant, pop up a big mass of earth, and then kind of excavate this delicious little root ball. Now on the root ball, there's all these nodules. They're like little grains of rice and the more you can keep on there, the better. Then you just pull off the bottom of the roots and pop it. That's absolutely delicious. Mm. So I found some wild strawberry here, um, but we're a little bit too early. Strawberry has these three highly serrated leaves, just like the store-bought variety, a little white flower, um, but we're just too early. The uh, some of these flowers have closed back up to turn into a fruit, but uh, at, the, at the earliest it looks like for this little patch it's going to be like another week or two. So in early spring, it's always good to check the fallen timber to see if there's any jelly fungus growing on it. All jelly funguses are edible, and you can actually pop them in your mouth without even cooking them. Um, they taste pretty much like a raw mushroom does. Now the crown jewel of all of the jelly funguses is this one right here called the woods ear mushroom. It grows on downed trees that have pretty much lost all of their bark and started to decompose a good bit. Just slice it off like so. And it does resemble a human ear a little bit. That's kind of where it gets its name from. I am not gonna eat this one right now. I actually brought a bag. To collect these, I thought they might be at today, so I'm just going to collect them all day and take them home and make a soup out of it. We're a little further down the trail here, and we found some ball head water leaf. This is pretty delicious. It tastes a lot like uh, baby spinach, but it has a different texture. It's a little more velvety. Each little leaflet kind of reminds me of uh, somebody with a mitten in their thumb sticking out, so like a winter mitten. The whole thing is edible, um, but I just eat the leaves. Mmm, that's good. So a little further up the trail, I found some wild violet. And wild violet comes in two colors. It comes in uh, yellow, and it also comes in violet. I've even seen it in white. It has kind of broader leaves. They're uh, all shooting out of the base on single stalks. So one stalk, one leaf coming out of the base. I just eat the flowers on this one and I think they make a delicious snack and they also make a pretty neat garnish. One cool thing about the flowers is right down here, see a bunch of lines. We just see them as purple, but uh, 
an insect pollinator like a bee, he sees them like landing strips at the airport and uh, he just follows it right into where the sweet nectar is. So this flower is really good at advertising how delicious it is. Mm, that's nice. We're at a location where a natural spring crosses our trail and in the moist soil around it, I found some wild mint right here. Mint is easily identifiable. It has a strong minty aroma. The stems are always square and the leaves grow opposite of each other. So pairs of two coming out opposite of each other on each side of the stem. Now, I like to make a nice little herbal chew out of this, but you can use it for just about anything. The tops are usually the most succulent. So I'll just grab a couple of them. Mm. Tuck it in my lip, now I got something to chew on for a little bit. I should caution you that there is a mint out there that we call the stinging nettle, and it will hurt you. Just make sure that the mint you're picking doesn't have little tiny spines all over the stems and leaves. Well, I really didn't think I was gonna find this one today, but you never know what you're gonna find when you go walking in the woods. This is Indian potato. It's usually one of the first flowers to bloom in the spring. And spring's kind of a relative term in western Wyoming here. This area recently had been covered underneath the snow, so everything's a couple weeks behind. Indian potato is a tiny little white flower. It kind of looks like a Q-tip and it has spindly little grass-like leaves. What we're after is the root that's a couple inches down underneath of the soil. Let's go straight in, pop it up. And you got yourself a tiny little sweet potato to feast on here. These are absolutely delicious. Well, those are just a few of my favorite early season trailside edibles. Hope what you learned here today will enrich your experience when you're out enjoying our public lands. If you like what you saw, be sure to click the link up at the top of the screen, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.